What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome to another edition of Coos' Corner, your go-to channel for college sports with a heavy dose of West Virginia Mountaineers. Will it be Q Country Roads for the Mountaineers on Saturday, or will the Jayhawks be saying Rock Chalk Jayhawk? Well, that's what we're going to find out as I break down this Kansas-West Virginia game coming up this weekend. But before I do that, I ask that you please hit the red subscribe button. Please give me the thumbs up if you like the content. If you're looking for Christmas gifts for the sports fan in your life, Go into the description box. I've got link there to Fanatics website. Actually two, I've got one to their main page and one for Mountaineer fans. You can get right to the Mountaineer gear on their site, bypass the homepage. There's promo codes in there for all the different holiday sales they got going on. And you'll be helping me out because I'll make a small commission if you use, that, if you use those links. Now let's get on with the show. First, let's look at the odds of, t- odds of this game. ESPN's giving West Virginia an 89% chance to win. Vegas has West Virginia minus 15 and a half. Well, an over-under on the game is 55 and a half. When you look at the stats of this game, I'll throw the team stats up on the screen for you to look at. Obviously, you've got West Virginia, 26.2 points per game, and Kansas is 20.1. But that's deceiving because the last two games, Kansas has been putting up more points. They brought a new quarterback in named Jalen Daniels, which I'll touch on in a minute. So the last two games that he has started, they're a different offense. Points allowed per game, West Virginia 24, Kansas 42.9. Total yards, West Virginia 380.2, Kansas 323.3. Yards passing, West Virginia 264, Kansas 179. Yards rushing, West Virginia 116 a game, worst in the conference. Kansas 144 a game. Yards allowed, West Virginia 351 to Kansas 492. Wow, they're giving it 492 yards a game. That's unreal. Uh, That's just bad. Passing yards allowed, West Virginia 217.5, Kansas 242.5. And then rushing yards allowed, West Virginia 133.8 to Kansas is 249.5. What stands out there to me, number one, Kansas's defense is just really bad. I mean, there's no, no way around it. Even the last two games where they've played better, the games have been much closer. As a matter of fact, they even beat Texas two weeks ago. They still gave up a lot of yards. And keep in mind, Kansas has the worst defense in the Big 12. They play Texas and TCU, who have the eighth and ninth worst defenses in the Big 12. So they were they were able to put up yards and points on those teams, but their defenses are nowhere near as good as West Virginia's. But that being said, this Jalen Daniels kid is the real deal, and he's playing well right now. So Kansas' offense is looking good. They don't beat themselves. They don't throw. They don't turn the ball over much. They don't commit a lot of penalties. They play good, clean football. They're well coached. So West Virginia cannot sleep on this team because they can beat us. They can beat us. Now let's look at the key players in this game. Obviously, you've got Jarrett Daggy for West Virginia. He's 238 for 365, 2,738 yards, 16 touchdowns, but he does have those 10 interceptions. As you see, he's only 262 yards away from reaching the 3,000 mark on the season, which would be a huge accomplishment. Be, be, it'd be cool to see him get that in this game. Now you look at Kansas' quarterback, Jalen Daniels. Now keep in mind, he's only started two games and played part of a third game due to the injury to the previous starter. But he's 59 out of 85, which is 69%. That's really good. 611 yards, six touchdowns, only one interception, QB rating of 151. So he's a good quarterback, and he, he's not a he's a pass-first quarterback. He prefers to throw the ball, but he can beat you with his feet if he has to. So West Virginia's got to be careful with that. Don't let him beat him with his feet. All right? All right. You look at the running backs. Obviously, Lady Brown, he's 91 yards away from 1,000, so he's got 909 yards on the year on 204 carries. He's got the 12 touchdowns. Devin Neal for Kansas, very good back. 158 carries, 707 yards, 8 touchdowns. Had 143 against Texas two weeks ago. Receivers, Winston Wright Jr. has got 57 receptions, 643 yards, and three touchdowns. Kwame Lasseter for Kansas, 52 receptions, 608 yards, three touchdowns. He's a good receiver. Kansas has got weapons on the offensive side of the ball. So like I said before, West Virginia's defense has to come ready to play in this game because Kansas can score, especially with this new quarterback. I want to touch on special teams a little bit in this video because I think it's going to make a difference in this game. When you look at... uh, the kickers, obviously Casey Legg had a good season. He's 17 out of 20 on the year in field goals. But you look at Kansas's kicker, I think his, name, his name's Jacob, I think it's Borsilla. He's seven for 13 on the year in field goals. That's only just over 50%, about 54%. So 
So he's, he's been struggling. And he's only one out of four, 30 to 39 yard range. So, uh, you know, that's been, a, that's been a weak spot for them this year. They have trouble scoring the ball uh, from the special team side and the punting. They're only averaging about 33 yards per punt. So West Virginia should win the field position battle in this game. Now let's look at some defensive players that stand out to me. Uh, obviously, we know Josh Chandler Samito is doing playing really well this year. He's tied for the Big 12. He's tied for the Big 12 lead in total tackles with 96. He's tied with two other players, Malcolm Rodriguez at Oklahoma State and safety Kenny Logan Jr. from Kansas. He also has 96 total tackles on the year. Plus. He has six pass breakups and interception. So this this guy, this guy can play. He's a good player. So West Virginia going to have to keep an eye out for him. And he's also their kick returner, and he's one of the top five kick returners in the conference. So West, this guy, this kid's an athlete. He can play, and he's going to be a key contributor for Kansas on the defensive side of the ball. You know, one of the few good, probably one of the few positives they have on defense this year. Now let's look at some keys of the game for each team to get a victory. First off, let's go let's start out with West Virginia. Biggest thing, in my opinion, for West Virginia is they've got to take care of the football and play mistake-free. Why is that? Because Kansas does. Kansas is Kansas has the least amount of penalties in the Big 12. They, they also don't turn the ball over very much. They're plus three in turnover margin. So what, is the, Kansas is well coached. They're a disciplined team. But West Virginia needs to play a clean game to match Kansas. Key number two. Establish a run with Letty Brown. As we've seen, Kansas gives up a lot of yards on the ground. If West Virginia's offensive line can continue their progression that we've seen the last last few weeks, uh, Letty run and Letty runs hard like we know he will. If he eclipses and he can eclipse that 100 yard mark, and West Virginia should win this game, maybe even easily, to be honest. Assuming our defense shows up to play, Kansas is keys to victory. I think Kansas. There's a few more of these for Kansas. A lot of things need to go right for these for Kansas to win, in my opinion. But my, can't the biggest key to the game and for me, for Kansas, big plays. Kansas needs to go for broke, man. They have nothing to lose. They're two and nine on the season. Just go out and give it everything you got. Run trick plays. Run flea flickers. Uh, do anything you can to try to throw West Virginia's defense off balance and try to hit some big plays. I think that's how they win this game. They need to score in the red zone. They're currently last in the league in red zone scoring. They're going to have to improve their performance in the red zone if they have a chance to beat West Virginia. Number three, they need to get to Jarrett Daggy. We know that Daggy's prone to turn the ball over if he gets pressured. So if Kansas can get to get to him, they do have a defensive lineman who's got six and a half sacks on the year. His name's Kyron Johnson. So if him and his teammates can uh, make some plays in the backfield on West Virginia, then they, they can beat West Virginia. Obviously stopping the run is going to be key. Can they stop Lady Brown? And then... Uh, Turnovers. If they can limit turnovers like they have all year and create some turnovers for West Virginia, then they can win the game. What's my score prediction for this game? Basically, if West Virginia shows up, does what they need to do, plays mistake-free football, I think they win this game. Spreads 15 and a half. West Virginia's margin of victory since Neil Brown's been here is only like eight points in the games that they've won. So they, so they normally don't win by 15 and a half, but I think this week it's going to be different. They're playing for a bowl game. They're going to have a lot to play for. For the seniors, it could be their last time playing a game in a Mountaineer uniform. So I think they're going to give it everything they've got. I think West Virginia wins. I think they, I think they cover, and I think they win by 17 points. I think they win 38 to 21. I think West Virginia's defense holds Kansas pretty much in check. I think, West Virginia's, I think West Virginia is able to establish the run with Letty Brown, which is going to open up the passing game. Daggy's going to have a big day. I think Letty's going to have a big day. It's going to be similar to what we saw last week against Texas, if not better. And West Virginia wins by 17, 31, 38 to 21. Well, let me know in the comments section what you think about my score prediction. Do you think it's realistic? What's your score prediction? Please drop it in the comment box. Please don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. Red subscribe button to help me get to my goal of 500 by the end of the year. And I encourage you to watch this video right here. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.